This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a mystery sci-fi film called Infinitum Subject Unknown. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Dr. Charles Marlon Dwight and Professor Aaron Ostergaard are interviewed regarding the Witness Research Center's discovery of the Paraverse. Ostergaard likens the Paraverse to our reality, with the Paraverse being at war for longer. This environment presented an opportunity for their experiment. Marlon Dwight views their success in bridging the two worlds as the beginning of human evolution. Meanwhile, a woman navigates in the darkness as helicopters and armed personnel hunt her down. She desperately hides but is eventually captured. In an attic, Jane is unconscious while tied and gagged to a chair. A shrieking scream wakes her up, and she immediately panics. She cries for help, but no one comes. Above her, a camera zooms in, keeping an eye on her movements. Her memory is triggered, making her see flashes of images, including herself in different scenarios. Jane struggles out of the chair, causing herself to fall on the floor. This allows her to free her legs and remove her gag. She then checks the window and sees no one outside. Still, Jane calls for help, not knowing that her screams are inaudible from outside. She hears Ostergaard's voice in her head, then sees a memory where the neighborhood outside has been destroyed. She gets a piercing headache before coming back to reality. Confused, she whimpers as the headaches and memories come in and out. Somewhere else, people watch Jane while monitoring her health and brain activity. They are unsatisfied with the result and talk about resetting her. Jane hears the conversation before a flash of light knocks her unconscious. Suddenly, Jane wakes up, bound and gagged in the chair again. She deliberately falls from the chair to free herself. She checks outside, but the streets are still empty. She then searches for a way out. During this, she's monitored by the people watching the cameras. Eventually, Jane finds no exit, so she whimpers on the chair hopelessly. At night, Jane is asleep on the floor but is woken up by Ostergaard's voice in her mind, discussing how their experiment opens the human mind to infinite possibilities. Suddenly, she finds herself in an alternate version of the house. Outside, an alarm blares as battle goes on. Confused, Jane cries while trying to black out the nightmare. The following day, Jane does sit-ups when she hears a whistling sound. She searches for the source and finds a loose floorboard. She opens the floorboard and heads down the steps under it as quietly as she can. Suddenly, flashes of images appear in her mind, and she wakes up at the top of the steps. Jane carefully makes her way down again, only to revert to the top when she reaches a certain step. She attempts to escape over and over until nightfall, but still can't make it past the stairs. Tired, Jane removes the cloth he used to gag her mouth and leaves it at the steps. She heads down again, but passes by the same cloth she discarded. Another piece of the same cloth is now hanging around her neck. Defeated, Jane whimpers. Ostergaard continues the interview, noting how the subject must feel like in real danger during the experiment. They soon develop the Kairos generator that allows them to fully control the situation, with time being their constant. Soon, Jane hears helicopters flying above the house. She heads back up and hears voices outside the window. She hears gunfire, so she crouches down. The sound abruptly stops and she sees flashes of images in her mind. The people who are watching her deem her unstable but they argue if they need to reset her again. One of them realizes that Jane can hear them, so they immediately reset the experiment. Jane finds herself tied and gagged on the chair again. After freeing herself, Jane digs through the corner and uncovers the same loose floorboard. But before attempting to escape, she remembers how she just ended back up in the attic again. Still, she tries climbing down and suddenly finds herself climbing up the steps instead. Finally, Jane reaches the house. The back door is barricaded, so she starts unloading the barricade. However, she hears two men outside. Immediately, she hides and takes a metal pipe until the men leave to check the front entrance. Jane holds the pipe close as she checks outside. The men conclude that the house is empty, and one of them complains that the woman they're looking for might be miles away by now. They decide to look elsewhere and leave. Jane starts investigating the house when a song suddenly plays from the living room. She checks around but finds the house empty. Spotting a piano, she presses a key, which triggers a memory of Ostergaard concluding that the universal wave function is real. Jane proceeds to check the kitchen and finds a knife that allows her to finally release her hands. She exits through the kitchen door and takes a breath of fresh air for the first time. In the garage, she finds a car, but it's locked. She heads back in the house to look for the key when she sees a memory of finding the car keys in the tool shed. Quickly, she finds the keys but is confused about how she knew where to find them. Jane starts the car but the engine fails. She screams in frustration and a flash of light knocks her out again. Jane wakes up back in the attic. Knowing what to do, she heads down to the house and dodges the men. Suddenly, the door to the living room shuts by itself. Jane checks to see if anyone else is there when the piano plays the same key she pressed earlier. She approaches the piano and notices a photo of a man on top. 
She takes the photo and sees a woman walking across from a mirror. Jane runs after the woman and into the tool shed but finds no one. Instead, she takes the car keys but remembers that the engine wouldn't start, though she'd forgotten how she knew that. While in the car, she tests the engine and confirms that it doesn't start. On the passenger seat, she finds several documents, including a letter for the Witness Research Center. A sound from outside catches her attention, so Jane hurries out. She ends up in an empty park where flashes of images fill her mind again until she passes out. Jane is back in the attic and repeats the process. However, when she goes to the piano, she sees a different photo on top of it. Upon grabbing the photo, she hears a sound and runs outside. While checking the car, another Jane runs to the tool shed and closes the door. Jane gets distracted by helicopters flying overhead. Once they pass, Jane checks the tool shed, but no one is there. Instead, she finds a radio but doesn't get a signal. She digs through the junk inside and packs a handful of items into a bag. Before leaving, she subconsciously reaches for the car keys by the doorway. She scavenges for items, retrieving a sweater and liquor before trying the car. Again, the car doesn't start. She checks the back seat, where she finds paperwork with Ostergaard's photo. This reminds her of the envelope addressed for the Witness Research Center. Before exiting the car, Jane remembers a map on the glove compartment, so she retrieves it before heading on her way. Jane walks out of the neighborhood and sees blimps flying in the distance. She carries on with her journey, but as she makes her way to a tunnel, she starts hearing Ostergaard's voice in her head again. Soon, she hears dogs barking and men nearby. Jane desperately hides and covers her mouth to stifle her cries as the men's voices grow closer. Suddenly, Jane gets a splitting headache, seeing other versions of herself hiding in the same area before waking back up in the attic. Determined to escape, she frees herself and heads straight to the tool shed to gather what she needs. She accidentally scratches her hand with a blade, so she wraps the wound with a cloth. She rereads the papers on the car and retrieves the map. Despite all past iterations, Jane tries to start the car again and to her surprise, it works. Driving around the city, Jane is still baffled that there's no one else anywhere. Soon, another voice comes from the radio in her bag. Immediately, she stops the car and answers the radio. The woman on the radio asks for help, but she doesn't know where she is. The woman tells her that someone's coming, so she abruptly ends the call. Jane continues to drive and turns left at a fork in the road. She ends up at another fork in the road, so she turns left again. Jane realizes that she's driving in circles no matter how many times she tries. This agitates her, and it triggers another reset. In the interview, Ostergaard notes how the same day can repeat no matter how they change the other elements. They continuously track the subject's psychological indicators and reset when their indicators overload. This helps them keep track of the subject's abilities to predetermine possibilities and hopefully allow the subject to eventually control reality. Jane repeats the day and drives off the city. However, the car's engine malfunctions this time, forcing her to walk. Near sundown, she finds a camper van and searches for its keys. When she doesn't find it, she tries the radio but gets no response. Tired, Jane settles down on the back of the van when a voice finally responds on the radio. Recognizing the woman's voice, Jane asks her what happened before. The woman recounts how soldiers were trying to take her. The woman instructs to keep moving even at night. Jane shares that she's hoping to get to Witness Research Center, which the woman also knows about. Jane instructs the woman to meet her at the center, but their communication disconnects. At night, Jane wakes up upon hearing the soldiers nearby. Carefully, she slips out of the van and hides in an abandoned greenhouse. She overhears the soldiers discussing about resetting her, but their superiors want to observe what she does onward. Suddenly, there's a gunshot and flashes of light. Jane stays hidden as a battle seems to start from a distance. When the coast is clear, Jane heads back to the van. While there, she witnesses something flying nearby. Frightened, she cries in the darkness. In the morning, Jane wakes up and is surprised that she didn't end up back in the attic. Feeling confident, she marches out when a vision of her driving the van distracts her. Suddenly, the van starts running. Jane hurries inside but is confused when there's no key in the ignition. Still, she drives the van out of the area. Before getting far, she sees someone in the middle of the road. Upon closer look, it's another version of her. Jane swerves the van to the side to avoid the woman, but she suddenly disappears and the engine sputters out. Jane checks the compass from her bag to figure out where to go, but the needle spins out of control. Visions fill her mind again and she gets reset. She hears Ostergaard explaining how every choice branches out into infinite possibilities, creating infinite worlds. He teases the idea of seeing every possibility and choosing which outcome to take. Jane is back in the attic, but she's sitting on a different chair and isn't bound or gagged. She smiles, seeing this as progress. 
she repeats the same actions, gathering supplies, driving out in the car, and the car breaking in the middle of nowhere at the same spot. Thinking that she did something wrong before, she takes a different path on foot. She recalls Ostergaard's claim on infinite possibilities, allowing her to remember where the camber van is. She reaches the van and wills it to start, which it does. Jane hops in and drives the van until she reaches the spot where the other her is. Believing that it isn't real, Jane closes her eyes and doesn't stop. The Jane on the road braces herself for impact but disappears when the van passes through her. At sundown, the van's engine sputters out again. Jane checks the map, seeing that she's only three miles away from the research center. Suddenly, the voice on the radio calls her again. Jane shares that she's close to the research center, and the woman claims to be around the same distance. The woman begs her for help to get out of the test, warning her that scientists at Witness are using them. Jane hears helicopters nearby, so she hurries out of the scene. She ends up in the woods at nightfall with dogs barking in the distance. She continues to run away, navigating in the darkness as quietly as she can. In the morning, Jane hears a humming sound. She follows the sound near a lake, but she suddenly glitches out and finds herself on the other side. She looks across and sees another her walking on the opposite side of the lake. A piercing headache stops her from calling out until the other Jane disappears. Jane moves on and finally reaches the Witness Research Center. She hurries over, but stops when she hears a woman's voice calling out. No one is around. So Jane continues on her way. Upon reaching the building, she sees an old scientist sifting through the books through a window. Jane knocks on the window, but the scientist doesn't notice her. Seeing that the entrance is locked, Jane looks for another way through the back. There, she finds another open door and heads inside. While resting, Jane hears a knock creak from afar. Voices of two scientists grow near her. The voices pass by her, but she sees nobody. She follows the direction of the voices into a library upstairs. But again, no one is there. While reading a magazine about the parallel world, a camera records Jane with two scientists walking behind her. She hears their voices as the scene glitches constantly until Jane is reset. Jane wakes up in the field in front of the building. She runs back inside and enters a different room, seeing that it's a chapel. She notices movement from the balcony, then turns to the stained window, recognizing the images from her visions. She hears the organ from upstairs, so she climbs up and sees nobody there. She looks down, not noticing that another her has just entered the chapel. She plays the organ, creating the same tune as earlier. Voices of scientists reach her again, and she follows them up the stairs. She sees the scientists, but they don't see her. Realizing that they're not really there, Jane follows them to see where they lead her. Jane reaches a room full of computers with CDs on the desk. She plays one CD and sees Marlon White's and Ostergaard's interviews. She plays more CDs, seeing the strange images she'd seen when she's reset and Ostergaard's introduction to their experiment. She finds the recording of the test subjects, seeing another woman waking up in another location, going through a different journey. Realizing that she's been watched throughout her journey, Jane gets a panic attack and is reset. Jane wakes up outside again and plots a different path. She goes to the research center, but as she's climbing up the stairs, she gets dizzy and nearly collapses. She continues and finds a door that she's been seeing in her visions, but it's locked. Jane unlocks it with her mind and opens it, finding herself in the location where the other test subject woke up. To her surprise, the other woman is also her. The other Jane panics upon waking up and gets reset. Her eyes bleed when she falls unconscious. Jane ends up back in the hallway. She opens the door and watches another her dancing in a studio. When the other Jane spots her, she collapses, and Jane closes the door. She tries opening it again, but it's locked. Jane starts walking away when the door opens on its own. She goes in and sees another version of her greeting her. The other Jane explains that she's stuck in a time loop, and this isn't the first time she reached that far, nor will it be the last. The other Jane claims that all possible outcomes of herself are happening all at once. Jane is simply a version that is predetermined to be lost. Suddenly, the other Jane starts talking to someone she doesn't see. Jane gets reset again and stumbles back into the hallway. She reaches for the door hesitantly, but collapses before touching the knob. She drops into another world where a beast is approaching her. Jane stumbles back in the hallway and telepathically closes the door before the beast reaches her. Tired and confused, Jane begs for the experiment to stop. She hears a voice preparing to disconnect her. She turns, and everything goes dark. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.